Okay, good morning and welcome to Mount Holy Baptist Church. And uh, we would like to greet everyone listening and uh, watching right now. Happy 4th of July. And uh, also we would like to uh, greet our uh, sister who is celebrating his birthday right now, Miss Caroline Pasco Diaz. Happy birthday. Let's sing the song, To God Be the Glory. Okay, let's sing. To God, to God be the glory, great things he has done. Okay, ready? Sing. To, to God, God be the glory, great things he has done. So love be the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and people rejoice all oh, come to the father through jesus the son and give him the glory great things he had done all oh, perfect redemption the purchase of blood to every believer the promise of god
discuss uh, what Brother Ben's uh, discussing these past few months. But what matters is that today is for it today, and uh, we got the end as we celebrate this day, Lord's Day, and um, this is what we focus on. Now, today, I would like to uh, talk about communication. Communication. Communication, we know, is really important. And sometimes communication, there are two things that can it do to your life. Amen. Your communication can be a blessing to you or to others, or it can be your Maybe the way you communicate is a portion of can he can destroy you. You know what? If we talk about all these things and talk about the book of the uh, the Bible, there are just portions of the scripture I will give to you. I mean, like communication is a good thing. And from all these things, it just everything you will see that uh, it just happens how it involves ourselves how it helps us to grow in our Christian life, how it grows us in, in our Christian living. But the question is this, when we talk about communication is, how is our communication with God? Do we value it? Right? Do we value our Christian life? Do we give importance to the church? Or to his church? Or can we say, do we give value to this word? When we talk about value, when we value things, when we talk about importance in life, there are a few things we can say to ourselves that we value more ourselves sometimes rather in the work of God. Rather submitting ourselves to the will of God. Because we value things, these are more important. What major factor that we need to see is this. When we use God's number, and I will discuss all these things, I will not discuss the whole chapter. And you know, when we talk about the number of God, it's in Numbers of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 3. Right? Mm -hmm. A verse that really familiar to each, every one of us. A verse that we know what Nehemiah did in chapter 1. His heart was broken. And he wants to rebuild. He wants to build something. He wants to see the glory of God in that place. And I believe through us, these are the things that we need to learn what Nehemiah did. And this scripture that I give to you, that's why I talk about the communication. All the things that we have right now, all the things that the freedom that we have right now, all the blessings that we have right now, all the things we enjoy from God, or what we have, it is came from our Savior. That's why the question was, do you value your Christian life? Do you value your salvation? Do you value as life as one servant of God or one of, one of the children of God? I would like to speak on the subject, very simple, but it's really hard to practice, it's really hard to understand, is the word prayer. Well, now what the Bible said, probably, if you don't even you open your Bibles, you can quote it, right? Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. And all of those answers that you will see is by what? By allowing God to see what is His purpose, what is His plan, why He gave it to us. Remember, always hear it, you always hear it behind the pulpit. God does always the answer for us. Yes, no, and wait, right? Wherever you go, you might go to the Philippines, pastors preach about all these things. You will hear, yes, wait, and no. And on another part, if God said no, Sometimes we ask God, Lord, why? Or sometimes when, they, God, when, they, when God said yes, or when we said wait, why wait? In the scripture, I will give you some verse, but in the scripture, you will see some verses there. You will see that the promotions come from the Lord. Everything is what it's given to us. Why we need to wait on God? Why? Because in the bottom of this, God, what? God has always a better plan for each every one of us. For those, listen carefully, 
for those who really understand and value the Word of God in their life. It's not just like, oh, you know what? This is what the Bible said. This is what the Scripture said. No, it's not just what the Bible said. What is the impact of what God's Word telling to you as being one of His children, one of His sons, or one of His daughters? It's not just what we hear on, on the radio. It's not what we hear on behind the pulpit. But what is the impact in your life as being a believer? Again, the question remains. Is your spiritual life growing or you are being Christian? Or I can say like a water, a stagnant water as a, as a Christian. That's why all these things you will give in that we need to open our hearts and our soul to receive the Word of God, what God has given to each every one of us. Why do you think sometimes there is no changes in life? Why do you think Christians have been long in the church for many, many years, but their life is still so-and-so? We're not saying that they didn't value the work of the work of God in their life, but I mean, maybe through all these things, the way we communicate with God, the way we look at the Scripture, maybe we don't value this anymore. We don't use it the way we use it. We don't communicate with God the way we communicate with God. What matters and what is important to God is when we have a problem, that's the time we communicate with God. This past few years, you know, we heard like people, they got sick, they got COVID, someone died, someone this, someone that. It's that when we talk about communicating with God, it's a whole thing process. It's a whole thing that you will see that I, it's not the purpose and the part of I just can come to God because I'm sick. But all through your life, when you open your heart to Jesus, you will see the what? That, you know what? He hears and understands, and, and, and He allows me to do what? That God will work with me, that He will work with me, with me, and He will touch me, and He will do something according to His will. That's why when we ask, when we beg to God, when we ask something for God, again, what Jeremiah did is this, call unto me and I will answer thee. Again, we can quote the verse. But do we acknowledge the power of God in our life? Do we acknowledge that when we call to God, do we acknowledge this is what I leave to God? So I will acknowledge Him whatever things that He wants me to do in my life. I will acknowledge Him whatever He says. Whether He said no, whatever He said wait, I will acknowledge that. I will accept it. Again, to those people who understands, who meditates, who really knows the Word of God, they know how to wait and they know what is the understand of no. Now, what is the muscle prayer? What is the condition of our life as you look at it? This is just, I can say, a, uh, a refreshing to us. When we talk about prayer, when we look at ourselves, what are conditions? What is the condition of our lives? You know what you can see? No problem, you, we are in the, in the church. Again, if you look at ourselves, if you look at the church, faith, number one, there's no faith. If you say people, you know what, they pray, but oh, maybe get to answer it. Oh, maybe. But I've heard they say that to God. Right? And again, they read the scripture. They look at the scripture. We know that the Bible, the God said, yeah, God can move mountains. But then he prays as if that God can touch anything, that God can move anything in our lives. So where's the faith? Secondly, you will see there's no fire of praying. 
There's no fruit also, and there's no fun of what communicating with God anymore. You know, when we are when we are in, in a portion of our life that we are in trouble, the way we pray to God is not the way that we pray really short. We really pray. We will once we will want to see the fruit. What will be the end of this thing? What do you see that you know what? You know what? I want to see the, the, the answer of all these things. I want to see the, all these things that want to see the fruit of what, uh, what my praying is all about. But to us, many believers, many Christians, these are the condition of their faith. That's why I say, you know what? I love my church. I love communicating with God. I love it, but sometimes you don't see that in their life. They just say it. They just like same thing, but they don't. They just like you know that you want to come up. They just want to impress you as as, as a children of God. I love being in the house of God, but they they come to church. They already like halfway in service. It's all invitation, <laughs> right? <laughs> Wherever you go, oh, I love my church, but they're not in the presence where it's supposed to be in the Sundays. Every Saturday, I just go to my Facebook and I just watch my my colleague and uh, my colleague in, in Bible school. They have their live night this Sunday, and they have, of course, different kinds of style of preaching. But I'm saying, like you know, and I hope, and I said to myself, I hope what they're there doing live, I hope they're also sitting on the view. It's not like you know. Just like, you know, saying that they love the church, but, you know, they don't see the presence. Now, why is that? You will see the condition of our land. You see the condition of what we have right now. When you look at our current events, what is a current event now? Some people are lying, some people they said no, some people said yes. Sometimes you don't know where to stand. Sometimes you don't know where you believe in. You don't know something that, you know what, you know, I'll just stand what is what these people said. Oh, because of this, because of that. I believe on this thing, I believe on that one. But to us as a Christian, we need to look at what the scripture said. We need to stand what the scripture said. In the Philippines, in the Philippines, talk about that the Al volcano is erupted again, and you know, see that. President and senators, like, like you call the Jara, like hacking each other, fighting, arguing about this thing about corruption things. I'm like, if we really, really and, and open our eyes and understanding, these are not new. This has been thread. This has been hearing all over the place. There is a strategy here. There is strategy in this, in this city. There is strategy in this area. There is something going on. But look at the scripture. The Bible says, you know what? The Lord is coming soon. These are the strengths that it follows through us. And through us as a Christian, God giving us a wake up call not to hide on our closet, but to go out and continue what the process of what God's plan to his nation. This is what Jeremiah did. This is what he desired. This is what he wanted to see. This is what he wants to rebuild. This is what he, he was in his heart. The question to us is this the same thing. What is in our hearts as being a children of God? Are we hiding in our closet? Are we hiding in, in our own self and not seeing that who we are in our area? This way you will see there is a what? There is what we call a wickedness, there is a wars, there is a world of life. Everything you see around the around us. The condition of our leaders, you will see that everything is is it, you know, is it interpretation? Everything is a lot of left and right. There's a hunger strike. There's a lot of this, lot of that. And why do you think why is that? 
what do you think what God's saying through all these things? What do you think what God's telling us as the children of God? What do you think what God wants to do as being a child of God? Now, when we really understand the way communication, the way we communicate with God, the way we acknowledge God in our life, the way we consult God in a lot of things. We will see His pardon to us. We will see the value of what He did in the cross of Calvary more than 2,000 years ago because we are pardoned. We are People, all these things, we've been part of ours. We are all forgiven. We have the word forgiveness. And we are forgiven through our sins. And this is what we call the, the, the man of prayer. Because you pray to God. Because you ask God. Because you acknowledge God. And through this in your life, the more you see the power of God working in you, the more you see that God working in your life, the more you see that you communicate with God, you see all His peace in you. He gave you all the power. He give you all His praise. In spite of all these things, you give praise to God. Because why? Because you know what? Wherever side you go, God is there with you. And some people forget about that. Sometimes you feel that, you know what? Where is God when I need Him? Where is God when I need a miracle? Where is God when, when, when things go wrong? Where is God when, when things happen? When, where is God in times of need? Does still he or does he still exist? Or does he still hear my prayers? Or does he still, still there in his throne? Or does he still doing something? Or his ears get dull of because of all people praying to him, all people asking him or something? Where's that movie? Um, John Kerry. That's a John Kerry. That's a, uh, Bruce Almighty. Remember that movie? Right? He wants to be God. <laughs> right? But sometimes, you know, think about it. You want to be God, but, you know, left or right, how many people, how many, all nations calling to you? So, you will see here that the man of prayer, the man who prays to God, he understands all these things. He understands uh, the miracle of prayer. You can do it. Uh, when you open your Bible, it's the book of James chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. Now I'm going to with this one. I have a certain time. And that all these things. I remember the past few weeks I asked you about who wants miracle in your life? Everybody wants miracle. Who wants to live in the mansion? Everybody wants to live in the mansion. Right? We have a dream. We have something that we need to, to do. We have something that we want in our life. As soon as possible, we want everything perfect. But it's not going to work that way. The miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ are the miracles of prayers. It humbles the sinners and heals the sick. And sometimes when we pray for all these things, sometimes it happens that, Lord, we pray for the sick people. Lord, we pray for healing. Lord, we pray for something. Lord, we, 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 we bind our hearts together. We bow in our prayer. We kneel. And I'm just saying to all this scripture in James chapter 5, you'll see all this thing, but you know what? The people who heal us and who praise to God. Again, it ends up that's what? According through His will. According through His plan and His purpose to each every one of us. And people of us here knows that you are praying for sick people that you know. Maybe, maybe, maybe two. But through ourselves, do we really value it? Do we really give time to it? Do we, can we say that 
I'm into it. I'm there when when it comes to praying. I'm there to to, to pray together with, with my co uh, Christians. I remember I remember way back then, like few like four years ago, maybe five years ago. Remember we have a prayer chain. The members, you recall that? I pray five o'clock in the afternoon, and you pray at six, and you pray at seven. Oh, I, I have work at nine, so okay, I'll pray for you at ten. <laughs> Remember those things? Those are good things that we pray for each other. We we, we bind ourselves together and pray. We pray for a sister like this. We sister, we pray for a sister like that, even though they're well. But we send our prayers to God. Why we do all those things? Why we need to do those things? Why we need to pray for them? Why still we pray for each other? You now in the Bible there are a few things that you will see that I want you to, to remind to remind us that why we need to communicate with God? Why we need to pray with God? Why is such a, a good thing having a sweet communication with God, even though every, everything is fair, everything is good with God, everything is, is good with us. Why Jeremiah said, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee and my things which just know us not. Because the portion of the scripture said, call unto me. And the last portion is this, and show you things which thou knowest not. God didn't say, or Jeremiah didn't say, the answer is there right away. Right? The answer is already there for you. And show thee my things which thou knowest not. It's a not. We don't know it will happen or not. But the portion of the first part is just call. Just call. Because in Matthew chapter 21 verse 22, All things whatsoever ye shall ask in my prayer, believing shall be seen. In Mark chapter 11 verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever he desire. When you and I pray, right? Believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. These are the portions of the scripture you will see that am I doing this to myself? Am I doing this even though God said already in Matthew chapter 21, in Mark chapter 11? In Luke chapter 11, verse 13, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? And the last verse is John chapter 14, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name that I will do, that He, Father, may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. The conclusion of, you see that, wait, he gave us book, he gave us verses. The question there is, if you ask something, did you really claim it? Or you just say it? Or you just read it? It's a very comforting words. If I ask something and it comes, I will receive. That's a good thing. But did we check? You can you say that? Oh, did I check myself? Do I do do, do, do I really deserve these things? Because. The Bible is an open book. It's an open life which everyone of us. It's a life, it's a scripture that I could say, like a fruit, a lot of flavors, a lot of things, a lot of, like, I, I could say, it encourages, it convicts us. It, it is complete ingredients for a human being who understands, who, who really reads his, his word, who corrects. That we will define and we will see how God, who is God is in our life. And, and it remains that if I ask something in my God, if I ask something to my Father, do I deserve it? Again, Jeremiah still remains. Call. 
That's why when, when he prayed, he never always what? Confessing. We always get for forgiveness. We ask asking God for things that, you know what? I need to change the direction of my life. I need to change where I should go. I need to stick where I need to stick. I need to stay where I need to stay. Where is my God is? Some Christian nowadays, because everything that they ask for God, oh, I thought when you ask something to God, He will give it. And did it happen? They having what you call a rebellion life or a rebellion heart. That's why they don't see the hand of God working with them. They sometimes they take it things, sometimes literally. Oh, I thought that I asked. This is the Bible said. But did you check yourself? Did you, did you see yourself as being a child of God? So through us, as I close, it's always in the process. Remember, we jump into Jeremiah 33, verse 3. But when you look back in chapter 1, what kind of Nehemiah life that he had? I know you know the story. And how God, or how, how the king approved everything. He goes to hold it. It's God. Who can change the heart of a human being? It's God. Who can change the heart of a person that you will see as a drunkard? It's God. For us to see, for us to see all these things, is the person of we need to pray. We need to pray for them. It's not always about us. It's not always about what we want, what we desire. We also pray for those people around us that they know and they really understand who is God is in their life. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 3. Thank the Lord for the word of prayer. Sometimes you see ourselves, Lord, as we pray. It's not we pray the way we used to. It's not to pray that we pray that we're showing our affection, our, the way we communicate with you. We just pray that we want to say. But tell us, Father, to just, when we come to you, when we pray, we pray to just that you give us a heart that's willing to, to obey and to listen to your voice. We pray in the remaining part of our service, may your blessing be upon us. Those people on their way, our, our family, may we be handy upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Have a coffee break for 30 minutes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs>